Fifth grade, Math with Confidence has just been released and today I'm gonna to do a flip through of the curriculum so you can see what it's like inside. Hello and welcome, I'm Christine, a second generation homeschooler and here on my channel, I love to share all things homeschool. If that's something you're interested in, please go ahead and subscribe. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you a flip through of Math with Confidence grade five. If you are new to my channel, you should know that I have loved this curriculum. We have used every single grade that is currently available. The only one that we're still waiting on is grade six that will come out next year. And uh, we intend to use it right through to the end because we love it so much. All three of my kids are using Math with Confidence. I've got one child in uh, kindergarten, one child using grade three, and one child currently right at the tail end of grade four. Um, so this is a curriculum that I have used with all my kids who all have different skills when it comes to math. Uh, I have a kid who's very strong in math, one who's not so strong, one who's just a beginner, and it has worked for all of them. So a really fantastic curriculum. For the sake of transparency, I will let you know that this was sent to me for free. Um, I haven't been paid to do this video. I wasn't even asked to do this video. But Kate, the author of the curriculum, was very sweet and reached out and asked if I wanted a copy to look over. Um, she did actually the same for fourth grade. And like I said, if you've been here for a while, you know that we love and use this curriculum. This is not just like a random uh, review and recommendation from me. It is something that is well loved and used in our home. But I wanted to show you what it looks like on the inside because there are a few little tweaks in this grade that lend itself more towards some independence with the student. Um, because I think that one of the things that's most heavily mentioned uh, by people is the level of parental involvement. When you are homeschooling children of different ages, it is a lot to be teaching math lessons and reading lessons and everything else. Like it, it's pretty draining. And so finding that balance of getting a curriculum that isn't too parent intensive, but also it gives your child the amount of instruction they need can be really challenging. So I will show you what it's like. I'll leave it up to you to decide whether or not you think that the amount of parental involvement is um, you know, too much or too little because you know your kid and your family best. For us, this is working really well. I don't find that math takes us a particularly long time. I specifically like the way that the lessons are laid out because they're very easy to break up and do over the course of the day rather than trying to get everything done in one um, sitting. And I actually think it cements the lesson uh, in my kids' brains a lot better by splitting it up. So that's just my little two cents about that. Let's turn the camera around and take a look inside. Math with confidence five. I can't believe I'm actually doing fifth grade with a child very soon. Um, here are the components for this curriculum. Now I have the PDF version here that um, that is why it's spiral bound. I always get questions. Where did you get your spiral bound? It's because I print it at home myself. Um, it is a bit of printing. So this is the instructor's guide portion. And as you can see, that's quite a lot of paper. Like it's almost, it's like half a ream of paper. It's a lot. Um, so I actually split it into two halves because I don't like carrying massive big books around with me or working with massive big books. So I like to split mine and I labeled mine with A and B. So it's easy for me to see what's what. So that's your teacher's guide. And then as is the case with, I think it's from level three that they split the workbook into two halves. Um, so you've got part A and you've got part B. Um, and my covers look a little bit funny because this is printed on A4 and not US letter size and it is formatted for US letter size. Hence why it looks a little bit funny. So there's that. Um, so let's have a look. Let's look at your instructor's guide first. And to be honest, if you've used any of the other levels of Math with Confidence, it's a very, very, very similar to all of the other levels in the way it is laid out and it works. It's not too much of a change from previous grade levels. So that is something that's great. Um, there's so much information in here and I have recommended this curriculum to so many homeschool friends now, in fact, I know of at least two, if not three, that are now using it. Um, and one of the reasons is that it just explains everything so well and does not leave you as the parent ill-equipped to teach your child. Like it gives you everything you need to know and some. And I just, I really love that. Like I feel like my math skills have grown since I started using this with my kids. Um, it's just been a fantastic curriculum. Uh, and as you'll see in the beginning of 
the book, there's a lot of information here on how to use it, how the pages are laid out, how to schedule it. Um, it's just like fourth grade and third grade where it's split into units. It's not split into weeks. So you've got 16 units in this level and there, I think it does tell you in here, scheduling, here we go. There are 144 lessons, 128 are regular lessons and 16 are optional enrichment lessons. Um, so you can adjust that. Uh, you can do it five days a week or you do it four days a week and it does tell you how long it'll take you. So if you teach four lessons a week and all the enrichment lessons, it'll take you 36 weeks. If you teach four lessons a week and skip the enrichment lessons, it will take you 32 weeks. If you teach five lessons per week and teach all the enrichment lessons, it'll take you 29 weeks. And if you do five lessons per week and skip the enrichment lessons, it'll take you 26 weeks. So very flexible, um, <clears throat> which is really great. Now manipulatives, I don't think there was anything else that we needed that we didn't already have for fourth grade. I'm pretty sure. I'm just gonna double check. Sid, a protractor, we already used that in fourth grade. Yeah, so everything that, if you've used fourth grade, you should have everything you need. And honestly, we barely use any um, manipulatives with my son. He just doesn't really need them now. Uh, we do use a protractor, obviously, because that's for like measuring and things, but we don't do a lot of that. We also don't play a lot of the games anymore. Once he's got it, like we don't do that if, unless he actually needs it. So here your lesson is set up very much like the previous levels where um, it's gonna tell you what you're doing. And then you've got your warm up, And then you go into teaching the actual lesson and it's split up. So you do this in correlation with the lesson book here, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, so as you're teaching, you're also working through one page of this book and it's broken up into like activity A and that will correlate to the lesson page as well. I really like that. So it's all written out here. What you are scripted to read aloud to your child is in bold. If you struggled with it not being different enough, I've seen parents like highlight it so it's easier for them to know what to read. Um, but that's how it's scripted. And that's how the lessons have always been scripted. Um, I do really like that. They've got these listed out here to show you. Um, they've got the black line practice memory work pages, which are on the, I think it's either the back of the, this book or the back of the student books, I haven't looked. Um, but you've got those, so your child can easily reference them when they need to. So yeah, there's not a lot different to show you in the instructor's manual compared to the other levels. It's basically much of a muchness. Um, you know, like they have always at the beginning of the units, they've got, an overview of what they're gonna be learning, what you might need, any extra materials, that kind of thing. So you can get a good idea there. And then at the end of the units, just trying to see, you've got your answer key, which this year I'm going to try with my son actually getting him to grade his own work because I think that will help. So get him to grade his own work, not to correct it necessarily, but to grade it, and then he can bring it to me and we can correct it together. So you've got answer key at the end of the unit and then you also always have a unit checkpoint so you can assess whether your child is ready to move on or not or if you need to do some more practice and whatnot. There is also a book. I think there's one or two books. Usually in, in the younger levels, there's been multiple um, picture books that you can read for each unit. This one has one or two recommendations. I don't think they're picture books though. I believe they're chapter books and um, you read like a chapter or so with each unit. So if you want to add the literature aspect of it to your math, that's still available. It's just a little bit different, which makes sense as they're getting older. So that's just part one and part two is the same. I just broke it down and I don't, I didn't print out all of the black line masters because I don't need them. Like some of the black line masters are things we already have. And also if I feel like we need them, I can just print them and laminate them. And that's your instructor's guide. Now let's have a look at the workbooks. The workbook is laid out almost exactly the same, but there is a little bit of a change. Um, and I actually just watched a video from Kate on this um, on YouTube where she shared the balance of trying to make sure that a child is getting guided instruction, but also there's an element of uh, independence that they can have with it. So she did definitely take that into consideration. So here we go, here's your author's note at the beginning of the workbook, and then this is your first lesson. And in this lesson, you can see at the top of the page, 
there's this section here, which is a little bit new. So you've got some writing here that you're, you can read through with your child, but your child could also read themselves. And then this is the page that you go through with your child as you're teaching the lesson. So you can see there's A, activity A up the top there, which is also marked in the teacher's guide and then activity B. And so you're going through those different aspects with them. And then this is the practice page that is based on the lesson that they just did. So it's practicing the skills that they've just learned. And then this is the review page, which practices skills that they have previously learned. So the way that I do it with my children is we set up school in the morning and I work with my youngest who's in kindergarten. And while I'm working with her, my two oldest do their review page in their math. And then when I get to them, we do the lesson together. And then we usually break for morning tea. And after morning tea, they come back and they do their practice page. So it really helps to break up the lesson. They don't feel overwhelmed by doing a bunch of math problems all together, but also I feel like it helps to solidify the concepts in their brains a lot better than if we had just sat down and done all of it together. So one of the things that Kate did mention was this section here that she added this in. So a lot of it's sort of like written in here. So the ch child starts to learn from reading instead of having to be taught everything. Um, you're still, it's still very hands-on. It's still very much, you have to be involved in teaching the lesson, but it's to help guide them in that direction. I will still say though, lessons do not take us very long to get through. The teaching portion, 10, 15 minutes tops for us. And that's with kids of varying mathematical abilities. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind. I do not find it super parent intensive. And I just don't know that math is something that you can be hands-off with when your kids are still quite young. Like elementary math is really <laughs> quite important to be a hands-on. So this is just, I'm just gonna flip through a little bit so you can see the kinds of things that they're covering in here. There's fraction work, there's more multiplication. Uh, there's long division in this. You've got your unit wrap-ups. Now your unit wrap-ups are technically optional. I have always done them with my kids as like an assessment to see if they understand what they've been taught throughout the unit, but technically it is optional. It's usually just two pages, a unit wrap up. There's more geometry. Decimals do come in here as well. Lots more division. Word problems. Measurements as well. And then this is new at the back of the workbooks, both workbooks, there are reference pages. So this is so your child, if they're doing their review and they do not understand a concept or remember something, they can look at this page and re like go over it again. And it is broken down. Like you can see the unit reference page and then also which lesson it went with. So that's like very helpful. Again, like if you've got a child who, you know, needs help or whatever, you can refer them to this and they can look this over and try to figure it out themselves. Something that I'm working on really hard with both, both my kids is if they're stuck on something while I'm working with their younger sister, they have to like mark it and then move on because I cannot, like sh their little sister's trying to read to me and then they're like, mom, mom, mom. And I'm just like, no, you have to wait. Like it is not urgent. You can move on to the next thing that you do understand. So that is a skill that we're currently working on. Um, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day and the skill is taking some time. <laughs> That's okay. This is workbook part B laid out exactly the same. And you can see the different things here. Um, I forgot to mention that their PDF version does have a printer friendly version. So if you buy the printed version of this, these pages, the background's like all colored, um, but the printer friendly version, you can see like there's color on the page, but the actual background is white so it's cheaper to print i have a canon uh, maxify um, before that i had an epson eco tank and both of them print just fine i will say the canon's a lot faster and i do think the print quality is better um but it also was a more expensive printer so that's just something to bear in mind um different kinds of triangles that they're learning about there they're multiplying fractions here now don't if there's anything you don't understand and it's freaking out. Please don't freak out because honestly, it's really clearly laid out and explained in the instructor's guide. And then she always gives an example of a problem with the correct answer. So you can see it on the page. Um, yeah, you're not left alone to figure it out by yourself, but also there's a Facebook group. If you really were stuck, you could go on there. Um, 
I have yet to come across anything that I haven't like that's totally flummoxed me but you know I'm sure it happens. Here you've got some conversions, some um, fraction to decimal conversions. Um, they do both metric and imperial measurement and I have actually appreciated this. As someone who lives in New Zealand, always use metric, but because so much of our media comes from the States, like, and recipes and things, you see imperial measurement all the time. And so I've always kind of had an idea of different measurements. But this has been really helpful to see the conversions um, and to be able to do things in my head. So I would encourage you, if you are someone who only uses Imperial, metric is so much more logical than Imperial. Like there is nothing logical about <laughs> Imperial measurements. And if you can learn those, I can guarantee you metric will be a breeze. So yeah, just something to bear in mind. I saw someone um, griping about having to learn metric and I was like seriously it's so so logical compared to the imperial imperial measurements uh, anyway this is nearing the end now so you're up to unit 15 unit 16 and then you've got your unit wrap up at the end of unit 16 but also there are some lesson activities that review the concept so these we tend to not do because we usually roll straight into the next level because we haven't been finishing these necessarily at the end of our school year. We kind of finish the grade mid-year and then we just move on to the next grade um, because she does review in the beginning of the next book as well. So these, there's practice and review in here if your child needs it. And then there's always a certificate at the back, which is really fun. And then just like the other first half of the workbook, you've also got your unit reference pages so that your child can easily grab these and if you've got the PDF version you could print these separately laminate them put them in a folder or whatever if you wanted to um, but I, I really like this I like how well she's listened to parents who are using the curriculum in the real world with lots of kids of different ages and she's tried her best to make sure that you're still giving your child the academic help that they need but also balancing the needs of the family as well and being real realistic and sensitive to that is really fantastic. So that's a flip through. Um, I don't have like all the manipulatives with me. There is a clear list of manipulatives you'll need, but also there's black line masters at the back of the instructor's guide for all the manipulatives or most of them anyway. I haven't checked like your protractor, you're gonna need a protractor, um, but you can print a lot of the manipulatives off if you don't have them and you don't necessarily have the budget or want to spend the money on them. Um, and you can also just test it out and see how your child does without a bunch of manipulatives because like I said we we don't tend to use them now that my son is a bit older um, unless he's really struggling with a concept or something like that but then even then you can tend to make things work from just around the house so um, yeah it, it don't feel like overwhelmed and I do love how affordable this is I feel like for a math curriculum that is so good it's very affordable because I mean one I have the PDF but two, once you've printed the instructor's guide, that's that's done, you know? And then I just reprint the workbooks when each kid moves on to the next grade. So that makes it very affordable for our family. As per usual, if you've got any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I will be more than happy to reply and help you out wherever I can. Um, and I have linked to the curriculum on well Trained Mine is where I get my PDF copy from. Um, and it is available from multiple retailers, but for the PDF copy, it is exclusively available from Well Trained Mind. So that's just linked down below for your convenience so you can go and have a look. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now.